My question is to the Minister for Agriculture and Water Resources. Will the Minister update the House on measures the government is taking to support farmers in financial hardship during drought, including in the electorate of Calais? And are there any alternate proposals that the Minister is aware of? The Minister for Agriculture and Water Resources. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And can I thank the member for Calais for his question? Because he knows better than anyone the impacts this drought is having on his farming constituency. And in fact, I was uh, only with him last month with a group of farmers in a paddock of wheat that had just been planted and was doing it pretty tough. It needed some rain. But I'm also proud that only a couple of weeks ago, the Prime Minister, myself, the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister for Regional Development went out across farms across New South Wales and Queensland and Narromine and Trangy, up into my electorate where we've had drought for seven years in places like Blackhall and Charleville and then up into Kennedy, a place called Bullia. What we did is we sat at farmers' kitchen table and we listened. We listened to them. And yesterday we acted. Yesterday we acted as a government because the common theme that we heard wherever we went was the farm household assistance was important to those farmers. It was putting bread and butter on farmers' kitchen table, putting fuel in the car to be able to send their kids into sport of the weekend. But it goes further than that. It went further than that because what it also does is it gives them the ability to go and get a skill, to diversify, to get a job in town, to be able to drive a forklift, to be able to diversify their income, to get an income stream in town. This is an important issue for those farmers. But above and beyond that, we've gone deeper. We've gone deeper than that. We've invested another $20 million into the Rural Financial Counselling Service. And what we're doing with these is we're putting these counsellors in front of these farmers, giving them caseworkers to get underneath the bonnet of their business, to be able to help them to understand whether they need to change their business. And in fact, sometimes they'll have to have a hard conversation. And sometimes people won't come out the other end. But you know what? This is about giving them the time to make those decisions with dignity and pride. That's what we're about. It's about making sure we understand what we are trying to do, making sure that we build a resilient agricultural sector, because the good times are still to come. When the rain comes, the regional communities that support agriculture will thrive. But we need to make sure that we set the environment around our farmers to be able to do that. But above all that, and above all the financial assistance we're going to give to our farmers, one of the biggest investments that we announced while we were out there was a further $2 million to online psychological services. Because I can tell you, from those people that I represent that have been in drought for seven years, they're mentally fatigued. They're buggered. They've had a gutful. And they don't know how they're going to get on. And you know what? It's important. It's important that they have the resilience, that we invest in them and their resilience. But above all, we need to reduce the, remove the stigma that if you do have a mental illness, it's OK to reach out for help. It's OK to ask for help, and it's beholden on each and every one of us that if we're OK, to reach out to one another and ask, are you OK? That's, right. That's what this government's about. It's not just financial. It's making sure that those regional communities that are doing it tough understand that when the good times come, that we'll be there to help them take advantage of it. Yeah.